We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Before we go with the intro, I need to, uh, I'm going to attribute this to the spiciness in my mouth. It's burning, guys. My mind is all over the place, but let's go. Let's, let's get go. the guest. So good afternoon. Today we have a super guest. Is she a coach? Is she a business owner? Is she a podcast host? Is she a teacher? Is she a mom? She is all of those and more. She is the business strategist you need. That is right. Today's episode is going to show you how to elevate your game and throw excuses out of the window. Trust me, from now on, every time I'll have an excuse or think I don't have enough time to do something, I'm going to be thinking of today's guest. She's a seasoned business owner that hosts, in her words, a seasonal event that is larger than your local target and crazier than Black Friday that's generated over 5 million smackaroos. Okay, okay. We, we might have added that last part. <laughs> <laughs> she did that while homeschooling four children with a deployed husband and no childcare. Wow. Guys, please welcome the process queen bee, our accountability coach, and our favorite soccer mom, Miss Rhonda Melody! Oh my gosh! I am so excited. I feel like we're at a party or something, guys. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we are at a party. We are, that's right. <laughs> Rhonda, welcome to the show. We're so excited and stoked that we finally have you here. Yeah, I, I've got a permagrin on my face. I mean, I love you guys. I love you guys before, but like <laughs> I am just like loving this energy right now. It's so awesome. Yeah, I, I know the other day we were actually talking to some people that listen to the show and we're like, you know, people think we, we do the show for, you know, the audience and the value. And, you know, we're like, you know, the real reason we actually do the show is for us. We're like, we just want to learn from you guys. And at the same time, we want to elevate our days. So the fact that we have to go live and elevate our energy so we can keep going throughout the week, we're like, we got to set up like these mini events and, and set up this energy so we can actually function. So that's a, that's a secret reason we do the show. <laughs> Not so secret anymore. <laughs> well, it, it's absolutely fantastic. And I like the pre-show stuff. Like I was watching, what was it? Like over 600 pieces of content. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. It, it, yeah, this morning, actually, we were actually going back to, through that data. And, you know, you being like the system person, and we're probably going to dive into this, like data is amazing. And I was actually... Like, let me go back because we had some awesome milestones, you know, 50th episode just released on podcast, uh, you know, 1500 downloads. But at the same time, it's so much more than that afterwards, not only with the relationships that we've been building with everybody, you know, with you, with everybody that comes into the show. But then we're like, OK, from this show, what else have we done? And it was incredible. 650 pieces. It was like posting like five or almost six times a day. And uh, the cool thing is that everything is working. Everything yeah. is working. And we're like, amazing. Let's keep doing that. More of what works. <laughs> Absolutely. And then because of the process that you set up, you've got a hockey team that reached out to you? Oh, uh, yeah, that too. A professional hockey team reached out. Mm -hmm. uh, they Their top sales guy apparently uh, is a big fan of the show. Uh, shout out to Luke. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, they they brought their, you know, marketing top person to come chat with us and, and deploy a, a strategy. So we're extremely thankful for that. So thank you, Rhonda, for that. I mean, that we were not supposed to plug that in today, but, you know, thank <laughs> you. We appreciate you. Now, let's turn the page and turn this all about you now. Rhonda, who, who's Rhonda? Like, how, how you know, do you start on this entrepreneurial world, systems world? And now, like, where are you? What are you doing? Well, it's interesting. So, I mean, you've really kind of built me up. So I, I needed like a really, really good story, right? <laughs> um, okay, sorry. It's fine. I'm sure like it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, I was working uh, in corporate America. I was a pharmaceutical rep. And at the time I was pregnant with my third child and I was eight months pregnant. And I thought, let's, you know, take $20,000 and jump all in on this little thing called a seasonal children's consignment sale. 
Uh, the first event was uh, had 100 consigners that consigned with me in 10,000 square feet. And we did it. And I paid my bills. I had my baby. And we just kept going after that. And literally today, that event has grown. I actually cap registration at 650 participants that fill a space. Wow as large as your local target. And I talk about it being crazier than Black Friday. It is crazier than Black Friday because we just, it's a condensed opportunity. You know, it's one of those, um, you got to get it or you're not going to get it kind of deals, right? For retail and moms just eat it up. And so uh, I've done 34 launches and over the course of that career have generated almost $6 million in sales. Now, Wow. I know from a, like an online standpoint, like some of the people out there, they're like, well, six million is not that much. It's three and five dollar items. Oh, and so when you say that and you say you've generated that much, you know, it's like, wow, I, it really took me. I was like, no, really? What? Really? So it really took me a while to, to really have that number set in. But what that number represents is impacting a community and impacting thousands of families, whether they come to the event and participate or we support through donations, which we have done for 17 years and counting. And so I think for me, what that little event did is it taught me everything that I know about business, but more importantly, when you run an event like that, you are time sensitive. Like when I say seconds matter, Second yeah. matter, because those people are coming if you were ready or you were not. And there have been times when I have not been ready and, you know, I was run over by the bus. That will never happen to me again. And so yeah. that's really, I cut my teeth. I learned everything that I know about business. And um, now I transitioned online and I work with female online business owners to really kind of help them maximize their magical pockets of time. Mm. Wow. What, what, what an incredible summary, by the way, this like was amazing, you know, and, and for those listening and I'm one of those, right. <laughs> what, what's what you sell on this, on these events? Like what specifically? Cause I had no idea that what it is. And just to give a little bit of background, the, what's that $3 product? What's that $5 product? And there's so many points in there, you know, scarcity and things that we can get into, but mm -hmm. like, what, is, what is that thing? I have no idea what you do and maybe that will give me personally like a little context on on how this thing works because it's fascinating so it's everything and and that's an interesting question that you even bring up because i never ventured away from items or things that were related to children so i specialized mm -hmm. like i stayed in my lane i didn't add anything additional to it so uh clothes for boys and girls it's all size and gender order uh all of toys action figures, sporting equipment, shoes. I mean, you name anything that has to do with kids is at my event. And one of the things I would also say is that, um, you know, we say it's larger than your local Target. Well, you know how small the children's section is in Target, right? Yeah. My event is all kids and it's the size of Target. And so that yeah. really gives you some perspective of, yeah. The massiveness of the event, I guess you would say. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, uh, like, if, if you can't, like, if you're listening right now, my mouth is just to the table, like, completely open <laughs> because it's insane. Like, once you put that in perspective, is 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 massive, and mm -hmm. doing that while having your family and homeschooling and all these things, right? That a lot of people might see it as a, as, as excuses to execute. But this is just incredible. I can't wait to dive in. Yeah, I mean, it's like you said at the end, and and I'm back, guys. I'm here. Yeah, I was, like, <laughs> I was, a, little, I was a little quiet. <laughs> Again, my mouth is on oh, fire, fire right now. But it, it's like you said, you mentioned the, the magical pockets of time, right? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it, it's interesting because, you know, lately, not too long ago, I actually read this thing that I don't remember exactly who it was, so I'm sorry I cannot attribute it to that person. But it was like... You can save time. Is like you can allocate time, right? Mm -hmm. So, in my eyes, you are a professional time allocator, right? Like you know where to put your time to be the most productive. And the, I mean, reading your bio, you know, four kids, 
homeschool, put in this massive event, the size of Target, right? Like, it's crazy. And before we actually started Biz Bros, we used to have the t-shirt company, right? The, the t-shirt that my brother is wearing. We actually did it ourselves. And we went to one of a convention uh, for people that had clothing brands and all that stuff that that's how I, I imagine in your, your, your event right now. And that was massive. It was so right. big. So when I imagine that and I'm like, wow, she can do that with, you know, everything else that she has going on in, in her life. Like, there's no excuse to say I don't have time to, to do yeah. something, right? I, I remember listening last night in one of your episodes on your show, by the way, which will leave the links right below because everybody has to go check it out, um, that you were saying you were actually telling this, this story, but you did not go into the money amount, right? And it, it, it sometimes a lot of entrepreneurs are like, oh my gosh, like I haven't reached out the seven figures, eight figures, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems like a, a, a status. And you're like, I'm just going to stay away with it because my credentials are here. This is a success I have with my clients. This is a success I have with my students. Right. So uh, why is that so important for an entrepreneur, somebody that's starting to teach or coach or be involved with a community at the level that you are? Um, because my bank account doesn't affect you. How much I make, you know, if we were in traditional business, um, I would not go, hey guys, how much, uh, how much money do you take home each month? How much money did you generate this month? I mean, it's just not a topic of conversation. And I under totally understand that like the revenue is, um, that is, uh, I don't know, we're elevating ourselves, we're giving ourselves props, so I can do the thing because I've generated the thing, right? I yeah. think that um, what that can do is it can uh, start comparitis, and then it mm. starts people on a journey. I mean, I work with women, and we are so hard on ourselves. And so it, it starts a journey of, okay, I can't be where she is. I'm going to stay right here. I'm not going to take imperfect action. If I can't take imperfect action, then I can't grow, right? So what I like to do is really celebrate my clients. I mean, you guys know we are in the community together. I love celebrating your wins. And we have a Friday win thread. I have Friday win threads in my communities. And it's not necessarily all tied to money. It's tied to the impact and it's tied to the action that really kind of creates that transformation in us as people and how we can serve others. Yeah, I absolutely I love, love the, the term comparitis. I think that's a prominent thing in the in the online world, especially, you know. Uh I mean honestly, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, yesterday I had a little comparitis. I found this this one guy <laughs> named uh David Peril. He's a writer, he has a really cool uh writing course and he's 25 years old and i was like whoa like i'm 27 right and i started and immediately i caught myself i was like no don't do it you cannot go there right like you are your own self and you know like steve says the only person you can compare yourself to is yourself yesterday right yeah so yeah. thank you for that yeah i i i love it because i mean going off of what fonzie was saying you know the second that we started to look at offer lab as a program right and uh, this opportunity to be coached we like we saw Austin. And we're like, dude, he's like, he's like my brother's age. Do we really trust this guy? Right? Yeah, it's he, the same he, thing. Lo he looks like twenty one. And uh, <laughs> he looks twenty one. And after a few words of just talking to him, and and this is where you come into play because one of the things was you guys are gonna have an accountability coach. It, this was not an easy investment. We talk a lot about investing in yourself. Um, I'm sure you do that with your with your community. But part of that is like, okay, having somebody of that background, not only we never ever saw the revenue side of things, we saw it's like, okay, she is really worried about the progress that we could make as students on this amazing program, which right. you have. So I want to give you a massive shout out because of that. And I know that sometimes we're behind the shadows, but we're there every single time. We're like, oh my gosh, we have to execute because, you know, that accountability coach in this case, you Rhonda is, is helping us move forward. And I think this is such a, a, an important factor. And we, we just jumped off of a sales uh, fulfillment masterclass by, by Brooke, right? And Brooke Evans, the amazing, amazing coach. But it's, it's wonderful what she says, and I want to tie down to, to, to this point where it's like whenever you make a sale as a business and with your content, you're promoting that sale. It never stops when you swipe that card. It starts when you swipe that card. And then at the end of the day, as your company, is like your responsibility to make sure that that person is having success if you establish the systems and the processes 
so they can have that success. So through this journey, Rhonda, have you experienced some kind of, and I'm sure you have, but what are some of the challenges, biggest challenges that you faced while building this business and, uh, and, and growing it to the size that it is, or, you know, now the community that you help? Well, I think for my seasonal event, you know, one of the luxuries that I had was that it was every six months. And so while, I mean, and a majority of that particular event happens before we even get to the event, like people register and I am encouraging, you know, we're, uh, we're registering pre-sales. Like we do so much before we even actually kind of get to the event. And so the luxury of that is that you don't pick at it, you know, as, as business owners, like we could go down a path, maybe six, seven days, maybe, oh, this isn't working, switch paths. And then uh, try something else and start six, seven days. Oh, this isn't going to work and switch. For me, it was every six months. And once I had my process in place, I worked my process. And, you know, um, originally I tried to tackle too much. And, you know, <laughs> you get the results of that. You, you have to like go through things. Like some of my stories are insane of things that you would never expect would happen at an event like that, or there's always something new, right? There's always an issue. There's always a problem. You got to work the problem, right? But um, I think that the luxury was that it was every six months and I didn't pick at it. Um, the challenge for me as my children got older um, was that we were homeschooling. Mm -hmm. And it happened during the school year. My event is two hours away. So I used to, before I delegated and now have a director who runs the program, um, I would leave for like seven or eight days. So I would have to have all of the school ready to go. I would, you know, have everything cooked, everything ready to go. And at one point, my husband was deployed while the event was going on and we were homeschooling. And so if I didn't show up, the event didn't happen. And so that was one of those rude awakenings of like, I got to take myself out with processes yeah. and systems so now I can delegate. And so because of that now, um, I have a structure. So I have a director and then I have team leaders and I have staff and we have like 400 volunteers that run the whole thing. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. 400 um, volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got to with an event that size. You can't, yeah. otherwise you're going to be sitting there with a onesie, sitting there swaying in the wind and like all of these women come at you. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Oh. This is what I envisioned. That there was this <laughs> this store back home. It's called Graffiti. I don't know if that existed here in the US. I'm guessing it did. And I remember like, it it was like pile of clothes. And when we would go with my mom, like we would, you would see people literally just like digging in, throwing the clothes everywhere. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is insane. Um, but wow, that's crazy. 400 people. That talks about the systems you need yeah. to have in place to be able to manage all those people uh, and for them to know exactly what tasks they need to do. That is impressive. Yeah. So. And we're leading this, I think, with the business and uh, everybody in the community that are developing something new, you got to start creating those systems and, and processes in place. And I think it's obviously a learning experience, especially like also if you if you want to start creating that content. One of the challenges that we faced at first was the lack of documenting what we're doing every single day. And once we started doing that, it really helped us create those SOPs, execute on those SOPs, improve those SOPs, standard oper operational uh, process, whatever. The, your, <laughs> your, your process, right? Yes. Exactly. Your process. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey, it's Wednesday, guys. Okay. Now, for us, that helped us a ton. What are some tools that helped you identify those processes and then started to get better at it every single year? Well, my event in and of itself, um, it, it, I, 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 let me, I just want to like speak to one of the things that you just said, um, as people are starting their business, I think that if you are just a solopreneur all by yourself and just getting started, that is the perfect time for you to start documenting your processes. A lot of times we feel really weird about doing that because it's just us. Um, a lot of times we think we don't need SOPs because oh, I'm not going to build out a team. 
but then we kind of get into the mindset. It's easier for me to do than tell somebody how to do it. And so it is extremely important. Like if I am like looking at the tier of process, number one, it's business organization. Number two, it's time management. And then, you know, we focus on what it is we're going to sell. Like what is our product, right? We develop that out. And then we have a process that actually supports all of that. I think, you know, that's that's key from the get-go because your processes are the workhorse of your business. Your process is going to whatever it is you are selling, that's going to help you in fulfillment. What is fulfillment going to help you with? That's customer satisfaction. And so, I mean, it's it's it, it's really, really critical at any stage of your business. Don't wait until you kind of quote unquote, and if you're listening, and these are air quotes, made it. Do it yeah. now. You you will thank us now, you, you know? Instead of waiting. Um, when you're talking about like, how did I build out all those processes? My event is in phases. And so there are specific phases that I will just take the problem or I'll take the day and I will work backwards. Um, and then I will say, okay, we've got set up. It takes us four hours. This is how many people we need. These are the stations. We'll set out all of uh, the tools and resources. We will direct and then we get the job done. And so that's really for every single phase of my event, that's how we would work the, the situation. Now, we'll work the process, develop the process. Even 17 years in, I will say, don't be steadfast to the process. Be open to shifting. Be open to changing to support the times, to um, bring in new tools to help you streamline. You know, when we're talking about processes, what are we talking about? Number one, it's the tools and the resources you need to complete the task. And it's a step by step to complete the task. That's all an SOP is. Now, my husband would disagree as he brings home, you know, a four inch binder full of SOPs for one day. Um, but really, the nuts and bolts of it, that's that's all that is. Right. Yeah. Tools and resources and step by step how to complete the task. And people want you to tell them what to do. They want direction. That's why I think a lot of entrepreneurs now are just, they're going around aimlessly because being an entrepreneur is a great thing, but being an entrepreneur is a bad thing because we don't have a playbook. We don't have someone telling us what to do. Right. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I feel like, honestly, you know, there are similarities and uh, all things you can do, but I think everybody's journey is different, right? So I feel like the SOPs that you'll develop for your business might be a little different than than so, somebody else's too. And sure. I love what you said about the it's easier for me to do uh, rather than ha delegating it. Um, kind of like that type of mindset because I've been there for sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I was the one editing all, all the videos for a while, and I was like, no, you know. And I didn't I didn't document anything, so I had it all in my, in my head. So I guess. My fear was if I hand this over and I, I obviously have to hand it with some of my knowledge, are they going to forget? Are they not going to do the same time? And it's because I didn't document it. I know if I would have documented it, I would have had uh, an easier time handing that task over because I, I would be like, well, he has everything he needs in this document to do it exactly how I'm doing it. So that that I think that is key. You know what? Why people get into that mindset? What do you think it is? That it's easier for them to do it? Or, I mean, yeah, I, think, it, I think it's yeah, like, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, I say, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's that they can't do it as well as I can. And they really don't know what it is they need. I think by documenting processes, what you see is um, areas of opportunity to delegate. And then that identifies the person you need and you can look for a specific skill set. And so what that process does is that it creates consistency. It creates an expectation. But more importantly, you bring on the right person. And with that amazing skill set, they are going to exceed your expectations of perfection. And that's where really the magic happens. And that's where growth happens. Yeah, um, I think we. I feel like we've seen that lately <laughs> with yeah. with our team. Um, every time they 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 throw something back at us, we're like, "Wow, that looks so cool." 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, and uh, I, I think a lot of it is is that letting go, right? It's because maybe as entrepreneurs, right, when you're building something or you're creating a piece of content, uh, a massive video, long video, or a show in this case for it, like us, right? You're like, that's your baby, you know, and you use invested time in learning these things, right? And and I think it was, I, I heard from Russell, like you, you, you can get your skill up to like a six and then you build another skill, you get it to another six and then you have all these things, all those skills into a six. But for you, it looks like a 10. And it's super hard to let that one go. But then the second like you find that person with that, that you can assign it to that process and they have a list that they can follow, then that person can take that to a 10, to an 11, to a 12, whatever, right? And they elevate that. And then you move to the next one. It's like, okay, who can I bring here that can do that? And uh, I think in the past year, we have massive growth on that end, especially in the last four months since we started this, because we made this the priority and we're like, okay, everything else, how can we like let it go? And we're like, okay, the first step is we got to document how we do it. And then with the team, we consulted, we're like, okay, here's how we do it. How will you do it better? How can, how can we get to these results instead of this result? And it was amazing because ideas started flowing both ways. And the result was so much better and so much faster. And once you experience that, what you have, once you have a taste of that, you're like, oh my gosh, who else can we bring? <laughs> so yeah, I, I I love how you like how you break it down, and then how you how you delegate it to to other people. I think too, maybe I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking is people don't realize what's the possibility of what they can do with that now. You know, time that they can allocate in something else, right? Mm -hmm. um, for example, us, we were just so stuck in fulfillment. And it actually wasn't until I think Offermind or OfferLab, I don't one of those events that we were like, dude, we're just like stuck in fulfillment doing the same thing. And that's why we're not growing because we need to allocate our time now in sales and go out there and talk mm -hmm. to people, create these relationships. And I think that was the point where we're like, okay, we need to bring some people in. And we brought them. And I mean, the rest is, is history. Yeah, in the history in the making. Uh, what are some <laughs> of the com common issues that you see when people trying to to take this path? Do you see them going back to the like, let me just do it myself? Like, what are some of the mistakes that people might make while making this transition as they grow? Well, I think that they've held on to, and I and this was like one of the mistakes I made early on was that I I wore a cape, and so I felt like I could do it all by myself. And it wasn't until really kind of uh, one particular situation. It was like really crazy during the event. And I was always, it was, it was obvious I was kind of crash and burning. Like I was running registers as customer service. I was helping people, you know, break down pack and plays. And mm -hmm. now my director, she put her hand on my shoulder and she was like, how can I help you? And I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that number one, they see a trend. People are building teams. This is a part of entrepreneurship, so I need to build a team. And then they go to build a team, and then they'll post in a group of 50,000 people, I'm looking for a VA, and then they're just inundated, and they don't know what they want. And so the first step would be to document your processes, like what it is you do. In some instances, I will say, like, for example, Dubsado. Dubsado is a customer relationship manager. And while you may feel overwhelmed in onboarding a client, once you set up a workflow with a click of a button, you can create an amazing client experience for $35 a month and you feel like you have a team working for you. So it serves wow. your client and it serves you. But what was you know, the name of that, that tool again? Because Dubsada. we might have to. Yeah, Dubsada. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I love Dubsada. So, and that's one of the tools that I train and I teach on. But um, that's just a for example. So instead of bringing someone on, let me step back and let me see where am I in the weeds, where I'm in the weeds. Let me just document that. And if it's just a, a simple on a sheet of paper, right, the tools and resources that I use and the step by step for just one thing. Now, this is not a checklist and an overwhelming brain dump. It is just step by step to onboard a client. That's one process. Now, the next process, if you've niched down and you do one thing, is how do, like, for example, how do I produce over 600 pieces of content? What does that process look like? <laughs> what are the resources and what are the step-by-step? -step? Yeah. And 
I mean, it, it, it really starts there. Otherwise, you have no idea what you need. Um, you're probably not generating enough revenue to bring people on. Um, you can't tell. I mean, someone could be a rock star and you let them go by. I mean, you, you, you set yourself and then you set your potential team up for failure without having processes first. Yeah, I, I, I love it. And I think like in my head, this is how I envision it. It's like different pieces of Lego, right? And my wife loves puzzles. I do not. And I realized that my business was a massive puzzle, right? And I had mm -hmm. all these pieces laying around that I had no idea. And then I, we started grabbing those pieces and putting them together. It's like, okay, well, now we're working on this little thing right here. What are the steps that we can do that? Who can we like give that to? Can we mix both of them? And then that becomes just one process, right? Especially, you know, the, the what you ask, like, how do you come up with 600 pieces of content? Well, that is a process that we've developed to, to accommodate what we need, right? And then other people are reaching out to see how we do it and how they can do it too, which is great. And then we're like, oh my gosh, this is like the, the light bulb moment. It's like, we should be doing this with like the on the business side, right? And uh, right. sometimes a lot of business, a lot of businesses have those processes, but then they lack it on the marketing and sales side of things because they think this is all fluff. It's the same thing; it goes both ways. So I love where this conversation is going because you know you can take that from the business, apply it to your content, be like establish your system and processes on how you create the content to accommodate the needs and objectives that your company needs to have, right? Oh yeah. my god. And then if you are a solopreneur, actually, this is a great example. We actually have a really good friend in Argentina. They grew a, a massive social account. It was an Instagram account. It's called El Quilombo. It's like funny stuff, like memes and stuff. Millions of followers. I think it's one of the biggest ones in Argentina. Yesterday, we saw a video that they rebranded the whole thing. And now what they're doing is like they documented everything that they did. And they did turn it and flip it into a business and a company and an agency teaching all these frameworks and documenting whatever they did. So that is a beautiful example on how to do it backwards. So if you're a business that have no idea on the content, flip it, apply it to your content. If you are somebody that creates a ton of content and don't know, flip it and apply it to your business. Exactly. Boom. Boom. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Massive clarity through these conversations. Rhonda, thank you. Wow. I'm going to have to hear that on repeat again for myself. So I, I can play, every time like I'm doing, I should do that myself. I'm just going to play this a little bit. That's it. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I've noticed in our business as some, I mean, right now, for example, you know, we like when I get, I, f I feel like I'm all over the place. That's when I'm, I know this like, okay, I need a system here. I need a process. How can I create something that is going to allow me to do this? without having to put so much brain effort every single time, right? And and we noticed this in the beginning. At the beginning, it was on the fulfillment side. I was all over the place. And mm -hmm. now eventually, like, that piece got built up and then move on to the next one. All over the place, okay, that piece got built up. Move, move on to the next one. But I think, too, it's really interesting, of, even about your content repurposing process that you guys have built. You did not start start there. And so it's really important, I think, for people to not compare and to know that they have to have a starting place. And you guys, you know, the, the beauty of a process is that you implement it. And with each implementation, you evaluate and you add to if you need to, right? It, the, the, the goal is not to keep switching and doing it. The goal is consistency and the goal is to build. And, um, what you have done did not just happen overnight. It was something that you implemented and you're like, did this work? Did this work? Wow. That a part of the process is evaluation, right? We talk about this. Um, yeah. So I think that it's just get started. Just yeah. start. Um, I, you know what? I think a really good example of this, and I know that you guys know this down in Florida. Think about the Chick-fil-A drive through my goodness like <laughs> wow yes. yeah. this is so my favorite why is that i mean let's think about like before all of this stuff hit i mean they didn't even like think this stuff was gonna hit but it was like driving through in a cadillac uh going up amazing customer service and then it's it's so interesting like when all of this happened so the only thing that my chick-fil-a added was like this big circus tent and they were still amazing and then I look at this other restaurant that looked like they were tailgating. What's the difference there? 
They invest yep. in that process and they continue to evolve that process into what it is now. Some of them have like big metal structures with eaters and coolers and you order in one station and you pay in another station. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Now this thing, I, I, I love that you bring that example because just last weekend we were actually going through a drive a drive through and we saw this thing. There were like two lines inside of like a single parking lot. The thing will go around the restaurant and my wife goes like, are you sure you guys like you want to eat here? Like, and I'm like, yeah, I'm craving the chicken nuggets. Oh my goodness, they're delicious. <laughs> and the and the strawberry milkshake. <laughs> That's my okay. for it. Sponsor the episode, please. Thank uh, you. Yeah, please. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, let, let's just try it out because I've seen like that's it. And it literally took us less than three minutes to go around this thing. And the amount of people that were there, it they had such a such an incredible process. But the cool thing is like we saw the process before a COVID happened. So they already had something, but they just like, like you said, they, they just added pieces to this, probably tried it. They will probably debriefing like after every single day, like what worked, what didn't work? How can we improve? One thing in Florida, the sun is mad, it's crazy, it's super hot. So I'm sure those tents are mm -hmm. for obviously their employees and the people ordering because you're in shade while you open your window. So it's nice. Uh, so amazing. Thank you for that example. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and I want to bring it back a little bit to what you say, right? Like, we didn't start with this. It wasn't uh, day and night. Oh, now we have a massive process <laughs> to have a bunch of um, content. We actually started our first uh, standard operating procedure. That's nice of you, Luhanin. And there we go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, the, our very first one was literally, okay, we're just going to hop every day on Facebook Live, and that's it. That was our first step. Like, step number one get in front of the computer, press Facebook Live on Facebook, talk, publish it, that's it. And then a few days later, we're like, okay, now we can allocate, we have some time we can use. What about we download the video and now we post it on Instagram? Now it's a two-step one, right? Like we go live, now we post it on Instagram. And it actually evolved that way uh, into it turned into this podcast and all the repurposing that you see behind it. But like you said, it's, it, it started one step at a time. We tried it, no. iterate, see what worked, and then moved on. Now, Rhonda, how do you how do you identify that mom like that that place to start? Because for a lot of people, you know, they see everyone. Like, I'm gonna talk on the content side. You see Gary V, right? And they're like, "This is how you are omnipresent, and you gotta publish all these things and all this stuff." And for us, that was like trying to chase that for a long time. And it took us a really crazy experience to realize that we couldn't do that from the very beginning. And we had to like really back. So we have our own story, but how do you like either teach people or like, or, or point them in the right direction? How do they find that spot? Well, I think Fonzie, I mean, like he just said it. He was like, we had to step back and we just did one thing. Why was that? Because you were overwhelmed and you probably crashed and burned and you realized that we, we cannot build this huge structure on toothpicks right? We have to build a solid foundation to that. And um, I think that people, they want to mirror, you know, the biggest, the biggest thing that I see across all entrepreneurs, like the most common thing that I see is hope. Hmm. Hope and inspiration, right? And we feel like we can, and that is so empowering. And then we try to tackle the whole. And what happens is, unfortunately, something crash and burn, whatever that is, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's, it's part of the learning process. And I think, you know, people really try to complicate business. You know, I am very simple about what it is I teach and how I coach. You guys see me in Trello boards. It's very simple. It does not have to be complicated to be successful. And here's the key. The key is, and, and we heard this this week with Brad in the community. If you guys haven't heard that session, go back and listen to it, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Is that when the systems that we create actually exceed our expenses, like the revenue, that is financial freedom because it's the system working. It's not us. We've replaced yeah. ourselves. That's our goal. So yeah. ugh, I just love things like that. I love Ooh. replacing the system. Yeah, it's big. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. Big impactful for me. Yes. So, so here, this is a gun moment. <laughs> <laughs> Clarity moment. Clarity yeah, moment. No, right? I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love that, you know, especially mm -hmm. because I think most entrepreneurs, at least 
I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to say most, but a lot of the entrepreneurs start because of that financial freedom, right? They're like, oh, I want to be free financially. And honestly, the best way is to keep it simple. I think that has been one of my, you know, half 2019 lessons from <laughs> to, to now, uh, because we used to overcomplicate everything every single time. I, I feel like at times right now, I know I'm doing it. Uh, we started this new segment <laughs> called Content Bites. And... And it's literally every single, well, I'm trying to do it every single day at 11 a.m. And I just bring, you know, real entrepreneurs that are publishing and, and they have some cool businesses. And we just talk for 30 minutes on Instagram Live. And I'm already, like, I'm, I'm on the first week and I'm already like, okay, I'm overwhelmed. I'm complicating this too much. And I'm thinking, how can I make this simple? So, like you said, I, um, an SOP, all it is, is tools and resources and a step-by-step -step guide. So I'm thinking, okay, what tool can I use to schedule people faster, right? Okay, Calendly, awesome, boom. How? What tool can I use to reach people faster? Okay, boom, this is what I'm going to do, right? So we have already a system on, I already have a system on, okay, I call them before going live, then we go live together, and then I call them again after we're live, and I tell them, hey, can you refer me to two people uh, that you think they're going to be a good match. So now I'm saving the time of going online and searching for all these people, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's pretty cool how you met the, how you mentioned it because it, it kind of like puts into perspective the the progression that that we've made because we used to just I, I guess the expression is run by chasing our own tail, you yeah. know, and 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 with two tails it can't get busy. Yeah, and and we never stop yeah. to actually think how can yeah. we make this simple. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, it's um, when we talk about financial freedom, this is something else that we that Brad said. I, I got to give props to Brad. People attach a financial figure to that. Oh, I think if I make a million dollars, and typically people are like, if I make a million dollars, then I'm going to be financially free. So then what happens? Then they go into a mode, they're locked down in their computer, they're chained to the computer, and how this online business thing, this really isn't working out for me because I'm, you know, it's the process that supports you that really makes the money. And if you can remove yourself from that and just sprinkle in some patience with that, it's golden. It really is. Amazing. Yeah. Se secret uh, recipe to uh, financial freedom. Yeah. I mean, I, I right love here. it because, you know, <laughs> how many stories haven't you heard about people losing themselves in that journey where they're like, oh, I'm chasing this financial freedom. But then it's like burnout, bam, right on your face. Right. <laughs> and and, and it is exactly that. Is that we don't have the, the processes. Like, uh, again, I feel like I felt it. I feel like sometimes I'm still even there. I don't yeah. think we, we have the, the right process. We're working on that. Right. Yeah. Um. But that'll be the goal to eventually remove yourself and your business being able to live without you having to be there. Yeah, I think it's pretty interesting to like taking this to to again to the content side. We've we've had a few calls now with people that we've been onboarding. And part of it, the solution that we provide for the content momentum product, they need a strategy already to have that strategy in place. Right. And it's like, okay, what is the system? We give you basically the outcome of the, like for that system to work. Right. And when they come on, they think they have a system, but then when we start extracting that information is a mess. Mm -hmm. And then we put something in paper and it's like, this is going to be the outcome. This is going to be a strategy for the next two months. We got to go back and reevaluate like you were saying Rhonda earlier, but then something sparks like, oh my gosh, I need to change this. I need to like flip it and change and okay is is sometimes it's very frustrating and it's in, interesting that we see that with some of our clients and some of the people that we're helping but then we have to turn around to like looking at ourselves be like are we doing that inside of our own business too and i think is is because we've probably built a habit around that that is not maybe the best habit so it's like you said like step back like Fonsi said like you said look at those processes whatever that is in your business or in your content and then establishing that one thing what can I do with the least amount of friction and then execute measure repeat? It works change a little bit if it doesn't. So well, I love that you simplify everything. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it, this is bringing massive clarity, by the way, this is like a, a therapist call hundred <laughs> percent. Love it. Love it. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what is next for you, Rhonda? I, I'm curious. What do you think? What do you see your, your business or systems and processes going, what was your goal? Because I, I, I'm sure you want to go to your, your daughter's soccer games. 
Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we talk about soccer all the time because you guys are like big on soccer. And as soon as like in the car, when we were at Offer Lab, I was like, oh, my gosh, let me tell you the story. Um, <laughs> so absolutely. You know, for me, what I'm what I my I guess Q3 goal is really I'm looking at um, my goal is time leveraged activities. And so uh, I have some low cost offers that are out there and um, elevating my customer, trying to over deliver as much as I can with those low cost offers. And if we're a good fit, taking the next step with me and doing all of that um, via ads and uh, nurturing sequences. And so um, I get to show up, I get to do what it is I love to do and support my my peeps in my community. And then I get to go be a homeschooling soccer mom and um, do the things I like to do here on the property with the chickens and the dogs and all the things. So I'm really putting processes in place right now to help me leverage my time and take me out of my business, so to speak. That's awesome. I love how you explain that on, and I don't want people to miss this, you know, doing what you love, like you want to show up and do what you love. And, you know, recently I was I was reading Zero to One from Peter Thiel, who's the one of the co-founders of PayPal. And he was talking that usually like startups in Silicon Valley, they need uh, two partners, right? One that is like business savvy and the other one that is like a little bit more technical. And that's so they can complement each other and each one of them do what they like to do, right? And in part, I think that's a little bit, how, I think at some moments we like, embrace different personalities like i think i'm more technical sometimes and then i, I like to be like more businessy sometimes and then he is just business over here <laughs> but but that that makes it interesting because you're finding those people to put in the right places so then you can do what you enjoy what you enjoy doing and i think a lot of people miss that and they again going back to the beginning they think they need to do everything themselves when it would be as easy as hey who wants to be my partner Let's split this, work smart, and I'm sure we can find a solution way faster than sacrificing a few years of my life. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Rhonda, we, we're in the downhill now, trying to land this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are some like amazing, awesome action points that people can you know implement today to like build on their system and processes? Okay, so three things. Uh, the first thing is business organization. If you don't have it, you're a hot mess. And you, you just, from the get-go, you need to get your business overwhelm under control. Number two, time management. And so um, I have a workshop that I put people through. It's called Time Management Rockstar. And Uh, we talked at the top of the hour about magical pockets of time. For me, as a busy homeschooling soccer mom, um, in the early days, it was somewhat of a struggle between managing like all of the things. And I realized that there were pockets of time that I, were, I was not maximizing. And if I could maximize those magical pockets, then I could do what I needed to do for me as, as Rhonda. And then I could also be present as a homeschooling soccer mom to my kids. And when I did that, it was never, I, I don't think there is a work-life balance. I think it's not, a, there is an ebb and there is a flow. And understanding time and managing your expectation of time and how mm. long it actually takes to do something and giving yourself permission to take the time to focus on one thing. I mean, I, I can't overemphasize that part enough, right? Mm. Um, yeah. And finally, three um, SOPs. And so it literally is a three-step process. One, in the description, it's the tools and resources to complete the task. Two, it's a step-by-step -step how to complete one task. Well, it's actually four steps. Three, mm -hmm. implement. Four, evaluate. Wait, uh, well, well, step three again, sorry. Uh, implement. You actually oh. implement the process. And then four, you evaluate it. And you should have a process for everything. Customer service, your Black Friday sale, your content production, your, your recording of your content. Um, you should have, you know, one of the processes, I think it has 17 steps that I share is like Facebook Live. 17 steps, you're like, 
how in the world does a Facebook Live have 17 steps? Well, are we getting on for the sake of getting on because we know that we should be on Facebook? Or are we being intentional with our time and really utilizing what can now be an asset for us to then share and impact others? And so when we think about it a little bit, yeah, they got the thumbs up. When we think about uh, that. Massive thumbs up here because I, we're actually, yeah, I, I love all this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just a different perspective. Don't do for the sake of doing. I mean, it just, it does, it's, you're not going to get a return on investment on that. Yeah. And it, I, I love that you brought that point home because, you know, the show is called Content is Profit. There's yeah. a reason it's called Content is Profit. Not only because people, when they think monetizing, is not only advertising. There's a lot of things and a lot of people have amazing processes behind what they do that then they can turn around and help people that are in a in, in a position to learn and have massive success. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's funny because now that we have this, we've been sharing, you know, what we're learning and different things. People have been coming to us like, for example, today, mm -hmm. somebody reached out and they were like, guys, do you guys help launch shows? And we're like, no, like we launched ours, but we don't, we don't do that yet. Maybe later. We'll see. Like we're, we're running some experiments, but I can refer you to somebody that does really, really well. And I can show you what we did. And if you want to replicate it, awesome. But, you know, I don't feel good enough yet to turn around and, and, and charge for that. I can totally do it for free and help you, but I don't think it's a, it's a product yet. So I, I, I love that, that you, that you brought that point of the processes and, and, and documenting everything because you could be helping so many people solving problems that they're having today. Yeah. I mean, wow. Now I just had like a, like a flashback, you know, the, the, the way we came into the entrepreneurship world <laughs> and my brother laughed when I say that word <laughs> entrepreneurship, um, you got this, your accent is sexy. The <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> They were, they were. <laughs> you so much. You are so much fun. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, so the way we came into it was through what some people call the the gateway drug to the <laughs> entrepreneurship world, which is a Ty Lopez course, right? <laughs> and now that we're talking about all this, I'm thinking what he sold us, the course was literally a bunch of his SOPs that he used to create his uh, marketing agency and then just turn it around and create it into a course. And I was like, huh, interesting. Yeah, massive, like, yeah, massive gong, 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 gong moment. moment. There you go, gong moment. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Rhonda, we know that you have a show, right? And you've been publishing for a while mm -hmm. and not just on the show, but you publish every single day in the community as well. You get, you get on lives, you interview people. And uh, obviously, this show is for we we don't like to say motivating people because motivating doesn't always follow uh, like action follows motivation so or doesn't action doesn't always follow motivation so we want to literally push people to execution <laughs> we're like go do it so where would you be without publishing where would you be right now today if you were not publishing wow um uh, <laughs> I would probably just still be here in my house. I mean, mm -hmm. I would be closed off from the world if I wasn't publishing, if I wasn't sharing. I think that, um, you know, sharing your unique talent. I mean, that that's, and, and never underestimate that. So um, I don't think that I would be where I am today. Um, I don't think that I would be able to go live. I don't feel like I would be comfortable going live. Having, conver I mean, I am having such a great time chatting with you guys. Um, and I love your business. I love, like, I love what you're doing. I mean, you're just exploding right now. And I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, without content, without publishing, who would know who I was? Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Powerful, powerful. Yeah. Uh, it, it's funny. Like we started asking this question because like we asked that question to, to like ourselves, we like, we'd probably be out of business right now if we did not start publishing the show but four months ago. Yeah. Uh, and we're like, uh, we're curious, you know, and there's some people that publish differently. You have your show and you go into groups and different things. People publish. There's other people that have published books or, you know, th different types of content. It doesn't have to be social content, but like, it's, it's amazing to see how the reaction of people and how much it means. And, and not only on the business side, but on the personal development side too. I think yeah. that has been one of the biggest ones for us. 
just the fact that we feel comfortable having this conversation over a live feed. And I now rather have a conversation over a live yeah. feed than behind closed doors, just because we know that it can help a lot of people that might be in that position. Yeah. Uh, I, I think my brother's biggest gain was that he finally learned how to speak English. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yep. After 10 years, I had to do it. <laughs> Well, and I think you brought up an interesting point. It's like it's making a connection. It's it's storytelling. It's sharing. It's sharing your unique talent, your gift, doing it in a way that people can relate to you and are attracted to you. I mean, I know that you have to get comments all the time. Like, I want to work with you guys just because. I mean, what you're doing, I love what you're doing. You make it look like it's so much fun. Um, I know that you have to get those comments from people. <laughs> you know forget no like trust factor it's just really it's making connections and it's making the the big world seem small yeah i i honestly started enjoying it more because before i wanted to publish and i'll make the effort but i think I, i i was tackling it with the wrong um you know point of view i think i was seeing it as oh i i have to just because I have to stay top of mind. And yes, you have to stay top of mind. That that is part of the game. But when I started seeing as as I have to, because I want to build all these relationships, that's when the game changed for me. Because now I'm excited to put myself out there. And I'm excited to have these conversations like the one we're having right now. Yeah. And, and now I'm like, as my brother, I've tried to join Twitter like five times <laughs> and I always quit after like half a day. I'm like, no, this is not for me. And the other day I joined and we follow these email marketers that they have, they do like a Twitter conversations, like one hour a week. Yeah. Shout out they, to Kennedy and Rob. Yeah. They're, they're on the show. Amazing guys. Yeah, they're awesome. And, yeah. and they do it live with people. Right. And they have like this, these questions that they drop every like five minutes. And then you have a bunch of people just talking and discussing. Right. It's awesome. And I was like, wow this is amazing like I'm, i'm literally building this relationship live here on twitter i want more of this right so i unfollowed everybody and i started following people that pretty much has that same outlook of let's build these relationships and and it changed everything for me within that platform right and now he's obsessed and now i'm obsessed with twitter i'm like oh after this i'm gonna go uh tweet my 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 thoughts <laughs> and then he's documenting it and then he's gonna teach it to me so i can do that too <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I literally so my mother, it, it's yes. like I see it now as a thought journal, Twitter. Like, oh, I'm gonna use it as my thought journal when I get these like random gong moments. Boop, I'm gonna just tweet it out there. <laughs> I was gonna say that I'm not into Twitter. We've got chickens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <I love it. laughs> we have chickens and a baby rooster that just right now he's trying to find his voice, but it sounds like you're strangling him in the coop. Yeah. But, um, well, that's cool. I do. I, I've not been able to get into Twitter myself, to be honest. I am, to yeah. be honest, like, I really try to get into Instagram. The only really thing that I love about Instagram, do you know what I love about Instagram? And I know you guys are going to love this too. It's the stories and the DMs. Yeah. That's the only thing that I want to use it because I'm making, what are we doing? We're making connections that way. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, actual relationship. It's funny because, uh, and I know we're sending a little bit, but I love this. Um, my wife is like, get your face out of your phone. You have no friends. Go out. Go <laughs> mix with people. And I'm like, well, first off, we're quarantined. We can't do that. And second, I'm making a ton of friends. with all these people we're having conversations with. And, and, you know, the reason she doesn't listen to the show is because she doesn't like my radio voice. And that's okay. I accepted that. That's fine. But she's making the commitment. No, she's like, I'll, uh, as soon as she's done with pharmacy school, which has been crazy, she's like, I'll listen to a couple episodes uh, to, to make you happy. Hopefully she likes it. We'll see. But it's okay. Dro for dro drop a message for her. Drop a message. So yeah, fully supported. <laughs> but anyways, but the thing is like, she's like, oh my God, you know, I, I'm concerned <laughs> that uh, you have no friends. And I'm like, well, you can rest in peace. You can like sleep easy because I do have like all these relationships <laughs> that we're building. Online. I do have friends, baby. I do have friends. <laughs> but it, What a great opportunity, right? Not only for on the show, but on, on Instagram, on DMs, meeting people all around the world that have yeah. your same interests, your same passions, right? Is making the world smaller. And we th see that as a massive benefit. And when the world opens up again, oh my God, the possibilities are endless. Uh, like we could go anywhere and have somebody with the same core principles, the same passions, the same taste, 
meet us there and that's it. You already know that person. Yeah, I'm, I, I want to add something a little bit there. I found the enjoyment too in actually meeting people with a little different thoughts because it's like, wow, you can have a healthy conversation as well, right? And learn from these people as well. So it's pretty cool. And eventually, you know, we've talked about <laughs> it. We're going to buy the Biz Bros van and we're going to travel cross country with our podcast set up and we're going to visit all our friends yeah. in live and we're going to record this podcast live. That's yes. going to be insane. You're going to have to come to South Carolina. Oh, we will. There'll we be, will. There'll be there'll be like a massive tr like road trip that we'll do. Thank you, Holly, for the idea. Yeah, we're, we're budgeting for it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Rhonda, how can how can people find you? How can people connect with you? Your interest in you and they work on their systems and and processes and all this amazing stuff so they can have the life that they want. Uh, just my website is great. I know I'm like old school. Like I'm not. I am yeah. social, but. Um, Rhonda Melogy, like if you look at Facebook and people then, I always know it's a telemarketer who's calling me, right? Because they never know how to say my last name. <laughs> but business plan of action. Business plan of action.com is like the home base for everything. Um, and then we can connect socially too. I love it. Awesome. Guys, you heard the episode. You took in all these values. So go and visit her website right now. Go yes. do it right now. <laughs> right now we got two, mi two minutes behind camera so please don't leave while we say bye to everybody so with that being said guys thank you so much for tuning in please don't forget to subscribe hit smash that subscribe button on the content is profit and follow us on social media at beast bros Co. that's right guys and if you found this episode impactful which i am sure you did and as you can tell this is our process for the outro don't forget to share it and and leave a five-star review bye